Hi everybody, I am back after, I don't know, maybe a month or two. So I don't want to make this a very long video, but I do want to just give you all an update because I have received a lot of emails from a lot of you um, requesting additional material and additional having additional questions about the exam. And uh, I've been going through a whole, whole lot uh, over the last month which is why I haven't been able to do any updates. So just to give you a little insight into what's going on, as you can see, my background is different because I am at my mom's house right now because uh, my apartment had mold in it and it was time for me to renew my lease, but I kept getting sick and I knew that something in the apartment was making me sick. And so I asked them to do an inspection and they wouldn't do it. So I had to pay to get them to do an inspection. And well, I had to pay an independent third party to do an inspection. And found out I had toxic mold, toxic mold in my apartment. And so I had to move out immediately. And I came back to my mom's house. So I've been here as I'm waiting to figure out what my next move is. But anyway, so uh, in the process, I have all my stuff in storage and um, my laptop included and my laptop is also messed up. So um, a lot, a lot, a lot going on. And so I have to commute to work about an hour to work and an hour from work every day. So I'm just now getting my brother's laptop to come and make some videos. So hopefully these won't be too long, but um, I do want to mention to people that are new to this channel, if you watched my very first video on uh, how I passed the license exam the first time, the, I mentioned a link in that video. Um, there, The link is no longer available. I took the exam in September. My friend that gave me that link gave it to me uh, in September a couple weeks or a week or so before I took the exam and it was a PDF file and it was a great book with like everything that you would ever need to study um, but the author took that book down from the site so I don't have that link so people have been asking me for it. I don't have it and I updated it on that video in the comments but I guess people didn't see it but I don't have that link anymore um, but I'm trying to find some additional information but while I've been gone I have been um, gathering some other useful helpful information for you as far as the license exam as well as social work in general because uh, this channel will be a social work channel um, specifically geared towards all things social work so with that being said again I am at my mom's house there are there are other people that live here um, so I could have some interruptions hopefully I won't um, my little cousin is here. He's like three years old and he likes to run in here randomly <laughs> and uh, come and hang out with me. So he may run in and hopefully I can uh, pause or stop the video. Um, I'm on my brother's laptop so I don't know how this thing really works with, with his laptop. But anyway, so um, I'm also going to be offering tutoring for the exam. So if you need tutoring, um, if you feel like that's your best bet, if the videos aren't enough or whatever you've been studying isn't enough, then I'm, off I'm offering tutoring online. Uh, we could come up with a contract and you could pay via PayPal um, and we'll go by the hour. So the, the rate that I'm going to charge is $25 an hour, um, which is negotiable. Um, I do have my license. I'm not, and I'll, I'll give you the information uh, so that you'll see that I am a licensed master level social worker. I graduated from the University of South Carolina in uh, Columbia, South Carolina in uh, May of 2014. So it'll be two years coming up in May. So um, that's pretty much it as far as what's been going on with me. So, but what I wanted to do though was make a video um, that is not necessarily geared towards uh, the license exam, um, but it's more so has to do with social work. But I, I am going to make a video on the code of ethics because a lot of people have asked for that. So, to get into it, um, 
as I've been waiting to get back with y'all, uh, I've been taking notes on a few things. So I want to do a video on self-disclosure. And I also want to do a video on domestic violence and children. And then I'm going to do a video on the code of ethics. So since I'm already five minutes into this, I guess I'll just go ahead and talk about self-disclosure in this video and um, talk about domestic violence in my next video since that'll be a little bit longer. So self-disclosure, and if you have any specific questions, you can leave them in the comment box and I'll respond. Um, uh, also about the tutoring, if you want to get tutored, you can send me an email. Uh, at my email address, which is missashharp at gmail.com, which sounds crazy, but it was just something I made up off the top of my head because I didn't want to use my personal email address for this kind of stuff. So it's M I S S A S H H A R P at gmail.com. Okay, so anyway, back to the self disclosure. Um, self disclosure is just what it sounds like, it is when the professional, the social worker, discloses things about uh, him or herself as it relates to the client in order to build a stronger rapport with the client, to be more relatable to the client. So um, we do that because a lot of times our clients see us as people who are um, that we walk on water and we we go to all these big name schools and we make all this money which we know is not true <laughs> as social workers and so we try to come and be on evil and and not evil and even playing level or playing field so to speak uh with the client and so um if you've been to grad school for social work i'm pretty sure you know about self-disclosure but this is just a little more on it um, so when do we self-disclose? Just like I just said, whenever we feel like we can't reach a client and we know that we can relate, we self-disclose, but you don't do it all the time. Um, so if you're just, you're trying to find a way to get, to build a rapport and build a trust with the client and you tried all the other ways and you haven't been able to get through you can self-disclose to try to build a stronger relationship with your client. But again, don't make it an everyday thing or an all the time thing. Why do we self-disclose? The when and the why is pretty much the same thing. We self-disclose because we want to build a rapport. Now, how do we self-disclose? It's very, 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 very tricky because we never want to make the situation about ourselves we always want it we want to make it about the client um so i can give you an example um, when i was working with families that were homeless uh, they were in transitional housing in a residential type facility i was a, a case manager there and a support services uh, coordinator there and i had a caseload of about 30 people that I had to see every week. And so uh, this young lady was there. She wasn't much younger than I am, probably just about three or four years younger. And so uh, that's another barrier is being close in age with your clients um, because it's kind of like someone their own age telling them what to do. Um, that's a big barrier that I've faced. And then also having your clients be so much older than you are because it's kind of like telling uh, your mom or your dad what to do and sometimes they feel like because you are younger um, that you that they can tell you what to do but you have to establish boundaries and let them know that um, I'm the professional you're the client uh, we have a professional client relationship I'm not your child um, and that's what it is but I had a uh, a client that was not much younger than me and uh, she, she had about four children she had a husband and her husband only had one child with her and so the three older children were not his and she had all this stuff from her past and she had a terrible terrible relationship with her father 
and um, you, she kind of looked at me as, okay, you're the same age as me. What can you tell me? Um, I college educated, and she's not. Um, just a lot of I don't have any children. She does. Like I just was not relating to her on a lot of different levels. And so when I found out that she had a bad relationship with her dad, that was something that we would talk about in case management. And, um, you know, so in order to get her to see that I understand, um, I wrote a poem for my dad before. And so I gave her the poem and I told her to read it, but I didn't tell her that I wrote it. And so I was like, well, maybe you should read this poem and go home and write your own poem as a way to get through and, and, you know, think about and cope with whatever she was going through about her dad. And so she did. And so when she came back uh, to case management the next week, I read her poem. She was so proud of her poem and she wanted me to read it. And I read it and she did a great job and she cried about it and she was able to get some things out. And so, you know, after that, I told her that it was a poem that I wrote for my dad. And so she was just really blown away that I actually had a problem in my life because you have to present yourself not as if you don't have any problems, but you don't make your problems your client's problems. You don't let your clients know anything personal about you. But um, I did let her read that poem and it wasn't anything super personal or anything like that. And so that's a form of self-disclosure without actually disclosing. And then another thing is, in my current job as a victim advocate at a law enforcement uh, agency, um, I deal with domestic violence a whole, whole lot. And so I, um, mostly on the phone, the next day after an incident happens. So um, a lot of times children are present in the home when the incident happens. And so I have to... Um, make a report to, to DSS, the Department of Social Services, and inform them that a child was present. And so after I talk with the, the victim, as we call them, uh, or the client in this case for social work, after I talk with the client about everything that's going to happen and what to expect as far as uh, court hearings and things like that, um, we kind of do a segue into talking about the children and I ask if the children were present and they'll say yeah and um, I have to inform them that I'm going to make a report and I just assure them that nothing bad is going to happen unless there's a reason so you know I let them know that someone may be calling or coming by and that um, they're just going to check on the children and make sure they're in a safe environment and that if they're not adequately clothed, fed, and have adequate shelter, then a case may be open. But if everything is good and safe and fine, then they don't have anything to worry about. And so, um, you know, a lot of times the victim will tell me, oh, well, the children were there, but they didn't hear anything. Um, it's not going to affect them. It's not a problem. And so, you know, they're very adamant. And I think that they know that that's probably not the case. And so um, I offer to refer them out to services for counseling for their children. And so, you know, I always tell them it's always up to them if they want to go to counseling or not, because social work is all about helping the client help themselves. Um, it's all about self-determination. And so I always tell them um, that it's up to them if they want to um go to counseling or not and so they'll, they'll say well you know I don't think we need that I'm not interested and then I sometimes I'll just go ahead and tell them that as a child I witnessed domestic violence in the home and even now as a 30 year old woman it still affects me and I let them know that I can remember being at home hearing the fighting and how sometimes I have triggers now. So I don't really go into a lot of detail, but I'm like, well, you may want to really think about it because I'm telling you from experience that I know the impact that it could have on your child. And so then, you know, some of them will still say no, but then some of them say, well, yeah, you know, maybe they were awake. Um, and yeah, I do want to, to get a referral to get them counseling. 
So um, that's pretty much just the two examples that I have for you. If you have any questions about self-disclosure or anything in this video or the tutoring or anything, uh, just let me know. Send me an email um, or leave a comment. And make sure you subscribe because I do have more videos coming up. All right. Talk to you soon. Well, I'll see you soon in the next video.